the bigger question should be, yes, Sonny, why did they vote for him? Yes. In sweeping... So they need to be introspective. No, no, no. We need to be introspective. Ha. <laughs> By being. The moment they try and bring a hateful agenda in this state, I'm going to stand ready to stand up and fight for the way we do things here. And now Nancy Pelosi is breaking her silence on Kamala's loss by throwing both her and Joe Biden under the bus. She said, quote, we live with what happened. And because the president endorsed Kamala Harris immediately, that really made it almost impossible to have a primary at that time. If it had been much earlier, it would have been different. So, Harold, what are they resisting? It's only been like 72 hours. So good to be back with you again. I, I would encourage everybody uh, to be, be gracious in losing uh, and winning uh, and accept, accept the victory. Two, it is a tradition in our country for governors to um, say on behalf of their states, speak on behalf of their states. I'm reminded when President Obama was in the, when he was in the White House and the health care package passed, it was called Obamacare, but officially called the Affordable Care Act, there were a number of states that thought that that law violated the rights of their citizens, and many of them came together, rightly so, and filed lawsuits. Uh, most were un unsuccessful, but they were, filed those lawsuits, and they took steps to try to, what they say, guard their citizens from the harms of the federal government. The Tenth Amendment allows, and other amendments allow them to do that. Uh, I'm reminded also that when the Roe v. Wade was overturned by Dobbs, uh, there were states, this power was given back to the states, and states have passed laws to uh, try to form laws that try to reflect the will of the people wherever they may live, be it Arkansas, Mississippi, or New York, California, wherever the state may be. Um, I'm even reminded President Obama campaigned on the fact that he wanted to close Guantanamo Bay, and he couldn't. I think one of the challenges that President Trump will face, as all presidents do, is reconciling the ease of making campaign uh, promises with the reality of making those promises policy. And that's really the rub in politics. How do you do that? President Trump will have an advantage uh, for many reasons, probably the foremost reason being if the Congress, if the House turns out to be a Republican House, President Trump will have the House, the Senate, and obviously the White House. Uh, and a majority of people on the court who lean or have been appointed by conservatives, or Republicans, that is, uh, on his side. So, again, I'm not surprised by this, Judge. This is an American tradition, states standing up to what they believe their state, people in their state want. And the good thing about it is if you, are, if you think they're wrong or I think they're right or vice versa, ultimately voters have that, will make that final determination by either electing those state legislatures or governors or, or reelecting them or, for that matter, unseating them. How do we unify the country when the left is already refusing to work with Donald Trump? You've got Governor Healy. I'm not going to allow my state police to work with Donald, uh, with President Trump. Here's my favorite, Phil Murphy, the governor of New Jersey. He says, I'll fight to the death. I'll fight back with every fiber of my being. Except Donald Trump got 1.9 million votes in New Jersey, which was 600,000 more than Phil Murphy did when he ran, Jesse. Yeah, some of it's posturing and you expect that from Democrats, they're not always the best losers. Unlike Republicans who take it easily and we're just class to join up. <laughs> the resistance is coming into focus. I remember the first Trump term, it was like Schiff, Comey, Mueller. Now it looks like it's the blue state governors. And mm -hmm. the 2028 presidential race has started. Oh, so no. the best way to raise your profile if you're a Democrat is to clash with Trump. Now, does that help the people you represent? No, <laughs> but they don't care. It's not about that. It's just about politics. So the big battle is going to be energy at first, and Trump might not win every battle there because the states control their own energy, electricity, and water and all that, but he can definitely jawbone the hell out of them from the White House podium and make them look stupid and make them change their ways there. Also, homelessness. Remember, they're going to have the Olympics in L.A. in four years. Trump's going to be president, and there's, what, 50,000 homeless people per block in L.A., so they're going to have to get that together. And I think he'll be effective in that because everybody doesn't want to embarrass the country. And then deportation. They're going to lose the states on this because that is a federal, federal issue. And there will be massive clashes because 
You're going to have cameras out there making sure that they capture the images of ICE coming along and taking these people away. And they deserve to be taken away. Sometimes you have to do tough stuff. But AOC is going to be there tying herself to migrants. It's going to be hysterical. <laughs> but sometimes dad has to do the tough thing. Doesn't make it always look great, but it's the right thing to do. And that's what we expect. You know, um, Katie, the interesting thing is that in California, I mean, Gavin Newsom can think he's going to, you know, he's going to be the tip of the spear in, yeah. the, in the resistance. But London Breed lost. Uh, Gascon, that horrible DA in Los Angeles, lost. Proposition 36, which allowed for the increasing of penalties from Prop 47 that Kamala was in support of, uh, that one. Um, and, you know, they're saying that they're geared up for the resistance. Yeah. Let's talk <laughs> about the will of the people, especially in California. Donald Trump flipped nine counties in California. Prop 36, as you mentioned, passed in all counties in California. 58 counties passed it because they want more law and order, they want punishment for criminals, and they want safer streets. It wasn't even close. Right. California is the number one state in the country for people leaving the state, not coming into the state because of the policies of the far left. A lot of the autopsies so far we've seen this week, which will continue on the Democratic side, is that they have been beholden to the far left and it has doomed them in this landslide election, not just at the federal level, but also in a lot of these local races. And so Democrats have an opportunity now to look at this and say, OK, we could actually work with Donald Trump. Clearly, the people of our states want us to be closer to the right side of the political spectrum than the far left side. The entire map shows it with the red arrows all going to the right. And yet you have people like Gavin Newsom tripling, doubling down on these failed policies that voters in his state Reject. have rejected. Yep.